continuing with the Italian speaker theme, uh, we have Francesco, <laughs> who's an epidemiologist with uh, MSF in Belgium and was previously here in the Manson and so on. But uh, Francesco, so over to you. Okay, good afternoon. I'm going to present a preliminary analysis of the affected uh, of patients affected with Ebola that were admitted to MSF Management Center during the current West Africa Ebola outbreak. So the objective of this presentation is first to provide an overall description of Ebola confirmed patients admitted to MSF centers, and secondly, uh, to present a preliminary exploration of uh, risk factors associated with deaths. So since the beginning of the epidemic, MSF uh, opened nine centers at a different points in time, two in Guinea, in Gekedu, and in the capital, Conakry, five in Sierra Leone, in Kailahun, uh, Bo, Magburaka, and two centers in the capital uh, of Freetown, and two in Liberia, in Foya, close to the border to, uh, with Guinea, and in the capital, Monrovia. So other small and temporary centers were open uh, for short periods, but that are not uh, uh, presented, uh, uh, are not being pulled in this analysis. So here a summary table of patient admitted and confirmed positive by an Ebola PCR test up to the 12th of April of this year in the nine centers. As you may see, there was a great difference between centers, ranging from more than 1,000 confirmed cases in Gekedu and Monrovia to just a few confirmed cases in Mag Magburaka and Kisi, the two centers that were open last. In total, MSF admitted 8,520 patients, of whom 5,018 were confirmed. So these are the patients, including the analysis I'm going to present. So we pulled uh, line list data of the nine center I mentioned above. We carry out a descriptive analysis for sex, age, time to admission, and case fatality. And regarding the factor associated to death, we estimated the incidence rate ratios in univariate and multivariate Poisson regression, and estimates were adjusted for variability among centers. So a low number of children, 5.6% of total cases, were reported being admitted to the centers. The majority of the cases were in the 15 to 54 years age group. Ebola cases were evenly distributed between male and female. <coughs> And the age and sex distribution, as you can see, were similar in all the nine, were similar in all the nine centers. So this is why we put them uh, then together, not uh, in uh, in detail by center. Regarding the the time to admission, 35% reported uh, of coming to the center within uh, three days since the, the onset of symptoms, 45 between uh, four and seven days. But almost 20% came at a day, a day, eight days or more uh, after the onset of symptom. For the variable, we for this variable we observe some important difference between centers. Some centers had a longer median time uh, to admission because most of their patients uh, stay some days in a transit or holding centers before being admitted to the to the EMC. So this slide presented the case fatality by center. Case fatality ranged from 38% in both to around 60% if we exclude uh, KC for which data are still incomplete. The overall case fatality was 52.2%. If we take a reference, uh, Gekedu as a reference where the epidemic started, the death ratio, the death risk ratio was significantly lower in the centers of Donka Kaila Hun and Bo. So we look at uh, whether case fatality change uh, over time. In this graph, you can see the blue bars, uh, which correspond to the monthly totals of admitted confirmed cases, and the red line, the overall case fatality, which, which with a decreasing trend, which is clearly visible in the months from August uh, to December the period uh, during which the majority of cases were admitted. 
This decreasing trend has been observed in all center with the exception of Donka and Bo. So we then look at the changes in case fatality according to age. In this case, we use a lowest uh, uh, estimate which keeps uh, uh, age uh, uh, as a continuous variable. You can see a J shape curve with, with the risk of dying around 70% in young children. The risk then, uh, then decreases progressively with the lowest value in the age of 15 to 20. 15 to 20 years. And from around 20 years, there is a steady increase of the risk with older age above 60, uh, above 60 years, having a risk of uh, 70 to 80 percent. So this is for the descriptive analysis. So regarding the analysis for the factor associated with this, here in this table is a summary of the disk of the risk and incidence rate ratio for the univariate and multivariate analysis. This table presents an estimate from all MSF uh, Ebola centers. You can see that there is a, a decrease of the risk uh, over time, uh, or with the, time, with the months passing, that the death incidence rate in young children and in person at older age is twice as high as in person aged five to 14 years that the risk of dying was not associated with the time to admission, and that male gender was at slightly <coughs> higher risk uh, in dying than female. So we explore the probability of survival according to the cycle threshold at admission. We made a Kaplan-Meier survival curve for each of the seven centers for which this information uh, is currently available. Data are still not available, unfortunately, for the centers of Donka and Kisi. I remind you that uh, we use the cycle thresholds, what we call the CT, as a proxy of the viral load. The, lowest, the lower the threshold, the higher the viral load. So we split uh, the variable into three groups, below 18 cycles, 18 to 20 cycles, and more than 22 cycles. The green curve on the graph shows the probability of survival during hospitalization for persons with a CT value above 22 cycles, the pink representing the probability in person between 18 to 22 cycles, and the blue, the probability of surviving person with less than 18 cycles. And you can see clearly that although some differences are observed between centers, overall, Patients with the ACT value above 22 had the maximal probability of survival, and patients with a CT value below 18 cycle had the minimum probability of survival. So looking at this, then, so we added the, the CT in the regression. And as you can see in this table, the death rate in patients with a cycle threshold below 18 at admission was more than seven times higher than in patients with more than 22 cycles, while the other factor did not uh, record major, major change. <coughs> so we acknowledge that this analysis has several limitations, in, in particular that we have analyzed a limited number of factors. Other factors need to be added in the analysis to have a more complete picture, in particular the clinical symptoms. Obviously, our analysis refer to patients admitted to MSF centers, and results cannot be extrapolated to other centers uh, or to uh, the significant number of community cases and deaths or to cases who died on arrival to the center uh, gate. Uh, we analyzed the time to admission, but uh, there is uh, an open question regarding the reliability of this information. I think everyone is aware of that. Uh, another limitation is that the, the pool data from different centers, each with their own specific uh, geographical context, may hide some ecological factor that we are not able to control. And the support of different laboratories and lab SA make the pooling of the lab result uh, quite challenging. However, uh, despite those limitations, we might conclude that the cycle threshold at admission was clearly the main predictor for deaths, 
that the risk of dying is also clearly associated with age, with persons in younger and older age at higher risk, that the death incidence rate decrease over time independently for at least the factor we were able to adjust for. And there is quite uh, some work still ahead, in particular on the analysis of symptoms at admission and on the treatment received during hospitalization to see whether the workload in the center had any impact in patient survival and to keep working improving the information on the viral load and its association with other factors. So I would like to acknowledge all MSF volunteers and local staff who worked and have been working so hard to fight this unprecedented epidemic. And to all epidemiologists and medical reference in the field and in MSF headquarters that have made this analysis possible. Thank you very much. Thanks, Francesca, for that great summary. Um, questions for Francesca? I'm looking further back because I found, yes, right at the back. <laughs> I've got a question because I saw that, uh, my name is Oscar Serrano from Working with Goal. I saw that the more, highest mortality was uh, on the under fives. I am very curious about the mortality among infants less than six months. Well, you can see the trend, I think, uh, is a go higher. That's, there is a clear, this is a, a regression. So you can see that uh, really there is a, the younger you are, the higher risk of dying, and also the older you are, the, the higher the risk of dying. So I think there is a, maybe the number are quite small there in the children, but this is clearly the trend. I don't know if someone did some analysis about the very younger. I don't know. The highest, and I, I, I mean, under ones, the death rate was very high for the under ones, but I don't know about the under six months. I don't know that particularly. But, um, here at the front, uh, with the yellow shirt. Thank you. I'm uh, Jukus Smith from Amazon of Holland. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I think this is a very important study uh, because it could be the start of more prognostic uh, studies in depth. But, uh, but for these studies, you need much more uh, information, much more variables. Do we have any idea uh, how, we, how to collect more of this information and not only uh, shouting by the fence? <laughs> <laughs> That yesterday we have the quite several presentation on that. But I would like to say something that we have other variables uh, in our database that we are not able to pull together because they were collected in an inconsistent way. And I think one of the big work that we really need to do is that to harmonize from the very beginning this data collection. Yeah, I agree with Apart that. Apart from the tools. We have to agree on what we need to but do. But I also think it's a big job now to, to make the best use out of the, the data that is available. There will hopefully never be an epidemic like this again. Um, and so we will never have a better opportunity to, uh, to explore these things. But it's a big task to put it even just in MSF uh, data put, to put that together, never mind across other organizations. But it's a huge task. Ruby. Hi, Ruby Siddiqui from the Mass Union in MSF UK. Um, can, Francesco, did you look at treatment? I'm particularly thinking about, um, there's been some criticism around oral rehydration, oral rehydration versus IV. Uh, this, this information has been collected for each center, and uh, as they say, not in a standardized way, so we cannot put them together at this, uh, at this stage. I hope that with the coming weeks or months, uh, there is some some centers that we are able to, to analyze. But surely this cannot be collected. Uh, this information cannot be pulled in the analysis as, a, as, a, as a this. But yeah, as I said, we hope to do maybe for the next. OK, thank you very much, Francesca. So